Factor Unite here going. Welcome to our next uh, installment of Unite Chemistry. Um, today we're going to, or in this video, we're just going to look a little bit at electron configuration. So electron configuration is just another way to describe the amount of electrons that are in each of its uh, electron shells. Um, and w when we look at this by the end of the video, hopefully you'll be able to tell um, where an uh, where an atom sits on the electron table uh, on the periodic table by being able to name its electron configuration. All right, so let's let's start off with this here. All right, so this here is a carbon atom. Now I don't actually have um, anything written in the middle there, but carbon um, would be six. 6p plus for six um, protons in the nucleus and we've got our six electrons. So remembering that any time that we're talking about an atom on the periodic table, we're saying that it's electrically neutral. So neutral meaning it's got to have the same amount of um, positive as negative. So if we have a look at this here, this um, carbon atom here, if I want to do the electron configuration for this, it's this simple. So all I'm going to do is count the amount of electrons there are in each shell and then write that down and that's that's essentially all the electron configuration is. So if I have a look at this one and I look in our first shell and um, we can see that there's only two electrons in the first shell. Now all of your electron configurations, um, the first number will always be two except for hydrogen obviously because hydrogen is number one. So all I'm going to do for the electron configuration for carbon is put a 2 and then I'm going to put a comma there. Then all I'm going to do is count how many um, electrons are in the next shell. And I've got 1, 2, 3, 4. Put a 4 there. Bang. That is the electron configuration for carbon. Alright, now you should be able to do the electron configuration without having to draw this. So you should be able to do this from, um, you know, listing an element from the periodic table or knowing its symbol or knowing its atomic number. Um, so let's take another example. And again, I'm not going to draw this one. So we'll go silicon. So if I go and have a look at silicon and I have a look at it on the periodic table, we'll see that silicon is 14. Um, so that's its atomic number. And again, when we're talking about electron configuration and we're talking about the periodic table, we're assuming that all of the elements and all of the atoms on there are electrically neutral. Um, so it's got to have the same amount of protons as electrons. So 14 being the atomic number, that means there's 14 protons. All right, so let's start writing this down in an electron configuration. So if I've got if I have a look at it, 14, I know that my first shell can only fit 2, so I'm going to get, go 2 and then put my comma there. Alright, 2, I've still got 12 to go. So if we remember back to our, um, our shell, so the first one is our L shell, um, the next one's going to be our K shell, so our L shell could only ever have 2 and our K shell, our second shell, could have a maximum of eight. So remembering that we've still got 12 to go, that's definitely going to have eight electrons in it. All right, haven't actually got to 14 yet, so at the moment we're only at 10, so I'm gonna put another common there, which means I've got another shell, so I've gotta put something down for another shell. So two and eight is 10, that leaves me with four electrons. So how many can the next shell hold? Well, um, remembering that, you know, we said the next shell can hold 18, but when we're looking at the valency, um, the next shell is 8. The maximum it can hold is 8 in its valency shell or its valency energy level, all right? So the maximum would be 8. 2 plus 8 is 10. We've got 14, so we've only got 4 left over. 4 is not more than 8, so we're just going to put a 4 there. And boom, there we go. There's our electron configuration for silicon, 284. Now here's the thing about these numbers that we've got here, all right? I can look at that electron configuration 
and tell you where carbon lives on the periodic table or tell you where silicon lives on the periodic table. So let's take a look at that, shall we? If we have a look at these numbers here, 2, 8 and 4, why do we have these numbers? Alright, so if we look back, we've got 2 because that's our first shell. Alright, we've got 8 because it's our second shell. And we've got 4 because that's our third shell. Alright, so what we're saying here is that silicon has three shells, all right? And anything that has three shells in it, three energy levels, all right, must live in period three on the periodic table, all right? Remember, period three means three electron shells. Period two means two electron shells, all right? So we have three shells here. So that means it must live in the third um, period on the periodic table. So that's great. We know that it lives in a third period, but what group does it live in? All right. Well, that the secret to that is in the last number. All right. Remembering that our outer shell is our valent shell. All right. And our valent shell is really, really important when we start talking about chemical reactions and we start doing our chemical formula. All right. So our valent shell here is the valence shell is the outer shell. It's the, the last shell that's being filled. All right? And remembering that anything that has four electrons in its valence shell must live in group four. Okay? So anything in any element in group four have four, all right, four electrons in its outer shell. So um, silicon, four in its outer shell, because that's what we've written here. All right? must mean it's in group four. So let's have a look at that, if I can find my periodic table. So I'll bring the periodic table up here. And as you can see, if I find silicon Si, all right, here we are, we're in period three, all right, one, two, three, four, group four. So where those two cross, guess what? That's where silicon is. All right, so you, you can tell where any element is on the periodic table by know, knowing its electron configuration. All right, and that's going to be, like I said, it'll be really important when we start doing um, chemical formula and stuff like that. Those, these valence electrons, all right, are really, really important when we talk about chemical reactions, all right? You know, we've said that protons and all that sort of stuff have been really important for atoms. Well, electrons are super important when we're talking about chemical reactions. So, what else can we get out of this? Let's have a look. So remember that you can get your, you know, our um, electron configuration. Once you know the atomic number, you can do the electron configuration. You don't need to draw these. Remembering that our first shell can only have two, our second shell eight, our third shell eight. All right, fourth shell's a little bit different, but for what we're going to do, we're not actually going to look past the fourth shell. All right, um, we can tell that there's three shells in this because we've got three numbers, which means it's in period three. We can see that the last number is four, which means I've got four valence electrons, which means that silicon would live in, in group four. So what I want you to do now in your workbooks is sort of go over the last two videos that we've looked at. So in the last video, we looked at the features of the periodic table. Um, so what I'd like now is I want you to draw a diagram, so the Bohr diagram or the electron shell diagram for every single element in the top 20. So that's from hydrogen all the way through to, is it potassium? No, calcium, sorry, which is 20. All right, so I want you to draw that for each one. So how many protons are in the middle? Name it, P plus, then the electrons. All right, and, then, and when you do that, I want you to draw up a periodic table with the top 20 elements, much like in Tyler DeWitt's first video where he chopped out the center. We only want the first two rows and the last six rows. All right, and fill in each one and so you can actually see the patterns of, um, you know, the extra shells and the extra valence electrons as we go along. 
I also want you to do a Lewis dot diagram for each element. And again, do that in, a, in the periodic table. So helium, uh, sorry, hydrogen and helium, lithium, um, uh, beryllium, boron, carbon. All right, so do it all in order. So do the Lewis dot diagram. And then I want you to actually do um, the electron configuration for every single top of the top 20 elements. All right, this is going to be really important for the next video that we're going to move on to. We're actually going to move on to um, ions. Now we've spoken about ions before and what they are, the fact that they're an electrically charged atom. So whether it's a negative or a positive atom. All right, now um, they will become electrically negative or positive because of these valence electrons. Something happens to these valence electrons. All right, and that's how ions are formed and then from ions that is how some things come together and again that has to do with the the electrical charge all right much like when we've got our protons and neutrons so uh, sorry our protons and electrons we've got protons that are positive we've got electrons that are buzzing around that are negative you know that positive and negative attract each other keep each other together well when we start talking about the ions that is how some of our chemical bonding happens all right, which and that again is important for our chemical reactions, the way that chemicals bond together. So in the next video, you're going to look at uh, start looking at what an ion is, and then how they start forming ionic bonds, and then we're going to start moving into writing some formula for that. Um, once we start getting to that point, that's when we're going to start doing some pracs. Um, but just to go over this one again need you to write the top 20 elements like this all right with the bore diagram or the shell diagram or energy level diagram whatever you want to call it need the uh, electron configuration for the top 20 elements and also want a lewis dot diagram for the top 20 elements all right um that'll do it for now i don't think there's any book work to go with that so if you can get onto that for me show me that book i will then have a worksheet for you to do thanks for that